welcome. My name is Allison. I am a librarian at the Genealogy Center and working from home during this time period. Uh, we have a stay-at-home order in Indiana, so we are abiding by it and doing our best to still reach out to the community and to our customers and hopefully helping people um, learn, just communicate, um, talk about genealogy, talk about history. We're living during a historic event. So I think this is just a really interesting time to at least connect with people. Um, since we can't physically connect with others, it's connecting uh, via the computer, cell phones, whatever you may have. It's trying to reach out digitally. Um, and hopefully we're, we're kind of doing that. I'm very glad to see that we have several participants here today, so I'm excited. But let's get started with Family Search. I absolutely adore Family Search. I'm a huge fan. I recommend that people use it quite often. And I think it's underutilized within a lot of different genealogy communities. Um, and I think that's because it's misunderstood. I could be wrong. That's my own idea of where people are not using it. Um, I will say that it is harder to search than Ancestry. If you get started with Ancestry and you're used to those um, suggestions that pop up or the shaky leaves or um, how every time you search, you almost always get a answer to a question, um, this can be a little bit more difficult. But sometimes the things that are more difficult are better. Um, I mean, think of school. Sometimes school's difficult, but it's still good for you. So kind of a fun little thing to go through. Now, one thing that I want to know is that you do have to have an account to use Family Search. It's a free account. You just click Create Account. Now, you can enter in whatever information you want. I am going to put in John Smith. I'm going to pick a birth date so you guys can see the next screen. That looks good. I pick John. Okay, there's an option to click, I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Do you need to click that? Is this something that is imperative to actually having an account? No. They're just keeping track of their own members. Family Search is a website that's created by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They have a lot of great information. Uh, it's a great organization, Family Search is. This is just to keep track of who's within the church itself. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Now, as you can see, this is a mock. This is not me. I just wanted you to see what this next page would look like. So at this point, it's just asking for that basic information. They want a username or email address, you to create a password, a recovery option, your location, and then they ask you a question about messages and then agreeing to the terms of use and privacy notice. And at that point, you can create the account. Now, I already have an account, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. And I use Chrome, so it saves my username and password, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, I went ahead and signed in because anytime you get into the documents itself, you are going to have to have an account. You have to have an account to look at the records. Um, you don't have to have an account to go into some of these areas within search, but you'll eventually hit a wall where you do need it. So I think it's important to start off there. Now, once you have your account, there's a lot of really cool things you can do. Now, the first thing that a lot of people do is go to records. Um, so you can just start by doing a search. Now, here's the thing. I don't actually start here. Um, I know that sounds maybe a little bit crazy, but I don't. I think it is more important for me, searching-wise, to look in the specific collections. Um, so 
You can start by researching location over here or finding the collection down here as well. So there's, there's ways to get to where I'm gonna point you from the search page, from the record page. But I wanna show you a few things first. There's a lot of things going on here. We have records, images, family tree, genealogies, catalog, books, and research wiki. I wanna get started with the research wiki. It's the last one, but I really like it. I tell a lot of people to go here. And why? Because it explains so much. So we're all researchers. I mean, you guys are here because you're interested in genealogy. And I saw all these amazing places where you guys are from. And you probably know about researching some of the places where your family's from, whether it be a different state than what you live in or not. But sometimes you hit a family member that's born in a state that you haven't researched before or a country you haven't researched before. At that point, you need to figure out the differences. You have to figure out what kind of records do they have and how can you use them? Remember I said there's a doggy here? I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so with the research wiki, this is where we can actually start looking for these different places. You can type them in. So for example, Indiana, it brings all of these up. But if I just put Indiana and just hit enter, it's going to bring up the general genealogy. Now, this is an example. Every single state has one of these. And then when you get to the countries, they also have these, which is incredibly helpful when you're starting off in a place that you don't know. But it's going to give you the getting started, the research tools, um, the online records, but I don't usually start there. And then it gives you that clickable map. So if there's a specific place in Indiana that you wanna dive down into a little bit further, it gives you the county's alphabetical in case you don't know where the county is, but you know the name. And then it talks about the migration routes and then some resources. But then on the right-hand side of the page over here, we also have beginning, record types, some background, ethnicity, and local research sources. Now, one of the things to remember with this research wiki is sometimes the records are easier to find at the state level rather than the county level or even the town level. But you never know. You need to check every single one. So, for example, church records. Church records are not going to pop up in the county levels because they're typically collected by statewide organizations or collections. So, for example, the Indiana Baptist Collection at, is at the Franklin College Library in Franklin, Indiana. Now, so if you're looking for Baptist records, you're not going to find them anywhere except this location unless that they're still at that local church, which you should also look at. But if you're looking for a record set like this, that's where you wouldn't want to go. And it goes through each one of these different religions. Now I can go back or just click on another one of these. Another thing that's really helpful is to know where the court records are. So I always like to click on this as well. And then this way you get a little bit about the courts in the state. So every state is a little bit different. Um, they have different names for the courts. So Court of Common Pleas, uh, Superior Court, Circuit Court. Um, there may be a probate court. So you want to look at these little histories to see what's going on. And this will help you with your research as you're trying to find where these records could be located. You could be looking and saying, okay, well, this happened during this time period. I should be finding this in the circuit court records. Aha, they're actually in the Court of Common Pleas. So you have to make sure you understand the history and this is gonna help you. Now, if I go back, and go over here, I wanna show you that you can also click on the map. You don't have to type something in. So I'm gonna click on United States and scroll down. Now I saw somebody said Maine, so I'm gonna click on Maine. 
All right, so with main research, we can scroll down and you can see how the counties are laid out. You can see the different pieces of information. So again, I could go to church records and see where the church records are located. So that's kind of an interesting piece of information because a lot of times you can't find the records, whether they be like birth or death because the states didn't actually have those types of records yet. So then you have to go to the church. That's why I keep going there. Now, let's say I click on one of these counties. I'm going to go with Lincoln. That sounds good. So once I do that, each of the counties actually tell you when they start keeping birth, marriage, death, court, land, probate, and census records. So this is really helpful. So you're not looking for a record that doesn't exist. Now you have to be careful. The asterisks on death and birth are pretty much telling you that those are not 100%. Um, most places, most places, it, it's hit or miss from those first dates until around 1900. I mean, you can, in some of the, the East Coast states, you can find birth and death records for really early time periods kept in the town records. But for most states, they weren't required to keep these records. So a lot of this is trying to find the information in um, family Bibles, church records, et cetera, using other pieces of information. But it's always good to know when you can at least find the records, at least have that little bit of hope. It's also nice because they tell us if there's any record loss for that particular county. So if, the, God forbid, there's a courthouse fire, this will tell us that. And that's incredibly helpful. I also find it really helpful that they tell us a bit about the boundary changes because you may be looking in one county, but the records for your particular ancestor are in a different county. So you have to keep that in mind as well. And then it tells you the neighboring areas, the towns, and it just gives you a little bit of the history. And then it goes through specific record sets for that location. Now for this particular county, everything is in the main sets. If you're looking at it, main state archive collection, main World War II draft index, et cetera. So there's nothing really specific to this county, but it's telling us that this county has information in those statewide record sets, which is helpful. So another thing to note is that while the, this research wiki is an incredible resource, it is incomplete. So you want to look here to get ideas and to understand a little bit more about the state or the county or even the country history. And then you want to look in other places as well, because family search is doing a lot. They're digitizing so much, but they can't keep up with the indexing, which is why there's crowdsource indexing where you and I can do it as well. Um, but not everything is in the research wiki, but there's other places we can look. And I'm gonna to get to that a little bit further. I wanna show you a little bit more about the research wiki, because I think one of the interesting things is looking at other countries. So let's go ahead and click on Europe. And just so we're actually searching a place that somebody might care about, somebody throw out a, country in Europe. Ireland, you're first. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Ireland. I'm going to click on the map. So once we do, we get that same information that we were getting for the states. And it's some good information. We have the counties. We have the resources the research tutorials. So we have a lot of really good information. Now I can click further in, but I also think it's interesting that when you get to different locations, different countries, it's going to tell you things like nobility. We don't have that in the United States. Um, poor houses, poor law, et cetera. 
Then you also have civil registration. This is something else that you don't see in the United States, but this is incredibly helpful in European countries. I would highly recommend looking at the civil registration. So let me click on that and it gives you a good introduction of what the civil registration is. And it tells you what records are kept, the start dates, and then some of the other information. Now it's gonna tell you how to access these. Now, the one thing about the research wiki that can be frustrating or incredibly helpful is that they will take you to websites that are paid. So you have to keep a keen eye on what you're clicking. So if you look here, there's something called Roots Ireland right here, and there is a dollar sign. That dollar sign is telling me that that is a paid website which is fine. And if you wanna, if you were very intent on researching this and this is the brick wall you wanna get through and they have the information you need, go for it. But I like free stuff. <laughs> That's my favorite four letter word. So it's kind of, it's good to know when there's a paid site because then I know, okay, I'm not gonna look there. I'm gonna see if there's another source that has similar information because a lot of times there are. So make sure to note that. And sometimes it'll be um, Ancestry World. Well, some places have access to Ancestry World like the Genealogy Center. So make sure to contact us if you have questions that could we could help with Ancestry World. Um, we can't do all of your research, but we can at least help you get a little bit further past that brick wall a little bit, maybe. Um, but there's other places that have pieces of information, and they're going to take you to other websites, too, that are free. So I find this to be incredibly helpful. They're not saying, oh, you must only look at our records because our records are the best. They're saying, oh, no, 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 these are here, these are here, make sure you're looking at everything. How great is that? It's like having a friend that's kind of helping you along with your genealogy. That's why I like the research wiki. So you can also see the books and tutorials um, and additional information. It gives you the districts, which is pretty nice as well. So this would be a really fun place to get started. Now, if I go back, we are going to go ahead and click on this Ireland Online Genealogy. Genealogy records. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. So this you can see, it's split up. So we have the church records and vital records. Now, you can see that there's dollar signs, but it doesn't tell you what website it is. This is the trick. Hover over it, don't click it. And in the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see a website pop up. And this one is search.findmypast.com and then a bunch of other stuff. So that tells me that that is on findmypast.com. Now, if you don't have a subscription for that, you may want to hold off on searching those collections and wait until the libraries open back up because a lot of libraries do have Find My Past. Not all, but you can call around and find out if there's a local library that has access to it because it is a subscription site. Um, but Find My Past has a lot of great Irish information. So if you are researching heavily in Ireland, maybe look and see if they have a 14-day free trial and get your research on for 14 days. So see what you can find. But yeah, hovering over these tells us a lot. So these records are from Ancestry.com if you look in that lower left-hand corner. It's a little bit faint. So you kind of have to look hard, but it does tell you what it is, which I think is incredibly helpful. Let me see. Okay, just making sure there's no more comments. So this is the research wiki. It's got all sorts of information. You can see how far down this goes with these online records. Now I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back one more. Now, Ireland's a little bit easier because that was in English for the most part, and you're going to have an easier time researching there. Let's look at a country where the language is harder. I'm just going to go ahead and just click on Germany. So I'm guessing at least one of you, if not multiple of you, have some ancestry in Germany. So 
Switzerland. I can do that too, but let's start with Germany. If we look here and scroll down a little bit, it's going to give us some information about how to deal with some of the language. So I'm gonna just keep going down so you can kind of see, okay, well, we all know that Germany is basically a new country and was made up of, oh, so many other different countries, kingdoms, whatever, it's a, little bit of everything. So you can kind of get an idea and it gives you a bit of the history here because it is very difficult to research when the lines keep changing. All right, so as we scroll down, here we have the Germany research strategies and tools. How are these helpful? Well, it is difficult to research in other countries when you are not native to the language. It's even more difficult if you have old German script. So this is a list of German given names, which is really helpful. This is done by BYU. Um, you can also look at the font here, um, common abbreviations, symbols. So this right here, these handouts are incredibly helpful. They have an old German script transcriber you can look at calendar changes. So this right here could be incredibly helpful if you're working on German research. It's not impossible. You wanna utilize the tools that are at hand. So utilize your um, Google Translate or whatever translate tool you wanna to use. Utilize different search tools like these. You want to make sure that you can figure out the languages and the different handwriting. And so if I go back up, you can also see that there's a little bit of information. Um, one of the things I will say with Germany is that their archives are fantastic. I have actually written letters to the archives, the local archives, and gotten responses and they have sent me documents, which has been absolutely amazing. I will tell you, I wrote the letters in German. Now, mind you, I do not speak German. I never took a German class in my life, okay? But I used Google Translate, and I looked up the different um, greetings and the way that people sign letters in German because sometimes it's not just sincerely. Um, there's other words that th they may use. So I looked those up, I wrote the letter, I translated it back to English to make sure I didn't say anything crazy, like something about donuts, and then translated it back to make sure it actually made sense. So I did that a few times, because I didn't want to sound like a complete idiot, but I did put an apology in there about not knowing German. So because of that, they're probably more likely to help me because I made the effort. I spent the time to figure out how to write an email, it was actually an email, to them in their native language that they could understand. They did write back in English, which I thought was hilarious. So they knew, <laughs> they knew, but I think they appreciated that I at least tried. I made an effort and they sent me the documents, no charge. They may not do that for everybody. Maybe I got somebody on a really good day, but it's worth a shot. The nicer you are to archivists and librarians, the more likely they are to do things for you and bent over backwards. So just keep that in mind. That's just a word to the wise. Um, I, but I think that's true of any occupation. The more you do to relate to somebody, the more likely they are to help. So I don't know. Kindness takes you far. So I'm gonna go back because somebody said Switzerland. So here you go, here's Switzerland. And you can see the information is very, very similar. You have that clickable map. This is actually really helpful. 
Um, so with Switzerland, you have different languages. So it gives you a language map, which is also incredibly helpful. And I'm not surprised about the French here. I doubt anybody is. So that way you can look that up as well. And so this is the map and they're all little clickable countries. And so once you click on them, you're gonna get more information. And hopefully this will help. Um, they also have them in categories. So you can also just click on these. But either way, it's a really, really good way to get started in genealogy with a new country or new location, even if it's in the United States, even if it's two counties over. You never know what laws are different. You don't know if there's been a courthouse fire. You don't know until you start looking, which is why I think this is a really good place to start when you're getting started with a new location. Now, I've spent a lot of time on research wiki because I find it so important. Remember how I said you could still find records um, that aren't included in the research wiki? That's why we're going to the catalog. These are my two favorite things to search. So the catalog is going to have things that are indexed and things that are not indexed. So that's going to be incredibly helpful. So let's go ahead and go with a place. I'm going to go with Ohio. Now I could type in a location from here or just type in the state. I'm going to go ahead and just type in the state because I can look at the statewide records. Now these are all the categories. So if I look here, okay, so Bible records. Any of these Bible records I could click on. So you have to click on the heading, whatever the heading is, and then that'll give you the titles. But I wanna go a little bit deeper. I wanna go to a county. So let's click on the places within United States, Ohio. By the way, they do this kind of backwards. So I'm gonna click on Defiance, because I saw somebody was from Defiance. So now it says, places within United States, Ohio Defiance. See how it goes backwards to what we normally put when we're talking about a location? So then we have the countywide records. And so I'm gonna pop down here to vital records because that's usually what people are interested in. Okay. Birth Certificates of Defiance County, Ohio. Let's click on that and see what it says. Okay, they're already online and searchable. So I can just click there. If I scroll down a little bit further, it tells me that same thing again by telling me that there are images, so they've been digitized, and this little magnifying glass tells me that it's searchable. You can search the index. So we already have a great start. Well, let's go back and see if we can find one that's a little bit different. Uh, let's go to coroner's inquest. So this is the court of common pleas. As it's loading. I don't know if you can hear my dog, but he's barking his fool head off and I do apologize if you can hear him. He has a bit of a Napoleon complex and big dogs make him lose his mind. Anyway, so, on the coroner's inquest, these are not indexed, but let's say you had an ancestor that passed away and there was an inquest. You could still look. So you're able to look at the actual images. They've been digitized. It would be like going to the courthouse and having a book pulled and looking at it page by page. So think of it that way. So it, it stinks that it's not indexed and you're not able just to throw a name in and have it magically appear. But you're able to do old fashioned going to the courthouse research from home in your pajamas, which is lovely. So we can flip through these pages and actually take a look and see what was going on and have the opportunity to read this information. I always love the little seals. So, and you can flip pages ahead. Let's say there was an alphabetical index at the beginning and you know, or a, you know the date and you wanna go further. So let's go ahead and click in 500. And then that's that page. And we can click on it and see where we actually are. I don't see 
I'm gonna zoom out a little. I don't see a date. I don't see a date either, but I enjoy the fact that we have a railroad here. So this would be where you would look for dates or the names and see if you're any further. So then you would be able to say, oh, okay, I only need to go a few more pages ahead. Ooh, there's a verdict. Um, I'm sure that's kind of interesting. So this is a wonderful piece of information for whoever needed it. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna see what we can do if we can go in further. So when you go beyond the county and go into the cities or the townships, there are less records, I will tell you that. Counties are usually where that, those pieces of information are. So let's just go ahead with, and go with defiance. So when I click on that, you see how there's only four hits now. So not as much, it's mostly kept at the county level with those records. But that is very different for East Coast states. If you're looking at a place like I don't know, New York or Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, you could be looking at a specific town and find all sorts of vital records because they kept a lot of town records that other locations didn't. So it's really hit or miss and you need to uncover every level and make sure you are specifically looking in all of these places. So I can go ahead and click on church records. So that's something that you may find at the town or city or township level that you wouldn't find at the county level are these church records. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one. And the verdict is they are digitized and we don't have access. So that's what that key means. The key means that you only have access at specific locations. So let's take a look and see what they're going to tell us. Okay, to view these images, you have to go to a family history center. Now, normally the genealogy center is a family history center, but we can't be there right now. Um, and we're gonna have to wait until after all of this is over to be able to access records like that. So that part stinks, but the good news is that you know it exists now. You can add it to a research list of things to do after this is all over and know that you can go back to it because half the battle is even finding the records in existence and finding out if you can find them. So we've seen a few options there. Um, a couple other things that you'll note as you're going through these records and I'm gonna do an international look just so you guys can see. Um, sometimes they are only accessible to members of the LDS church. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go to France. And I don't know, what do we feel like doing? I think we feel like church history. And Bowser's. Let's just pick something. Some of these are books. So I'm going to show you what happens. Okay, so this is a digital. This is a digital book. And they have put it online. And we can just click on it and go to it. And it's a public access level, which is fantastic. I'm looking down here. If you look for an access level, that'll tell you if you're able to look at the entirety of a book. And we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But let me go back. So you can see with the different languages, it, it could be a problem trying to find something. Oh, here we go. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and do Germany this time. So I know that Germany has records that are only, you can only access if you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So slightly annoying, but you can always go to a family history center and see if you can make a friend. 
So this is international film. So you're searching for your ancestors in Germany and you're frustrated because you can't get any further with ancestry. This is online. This is like traveling and going to a church in Germany and getting these records. I mean, you're gonna need a translator probably unless any of you can speak German, read German. Um, but this is great information. You're going to be able to find the names. You're going to be able to find uh, locations, dates. Look at this, 1788. How fantastic is that? The question that we asked on Facebook yesterday was, what's the oldest document you have? Well, whoever's family this is, this would be one of the older documents, possibly. Um, 1788, how fantastic is that? So you want to make sure you check the catalog, because you're going to find things in the catalog that you are not going to find if you're doing a search in the records or if you're doing a search back here in the research wiki. So you need to do both. And then with the records, I'm going to go back here so I can show you. This is just the browsing. So you have the find a collection. If you know what the collection's name is, you can type it in but a lot of us don't know what collections are available until we see them, which is why I think the catalog is a better choice to go through rather than trying to look through the records like this, browsing the collections. Um, and then if you click on this, well, let's just click on Arkansas, that sounds good. This is where it's also gonna give you kind of a list of records that they have, but they're not gonna be really organized per se. So I find this to be a little bit more difficult. So you can click on that location and then scroll down and all of these have been indexed and it has the little cameras for things that have been digitized. And then it also tells you the number of records. So if you're looking at a record set and there's only seven records, that tells me that I am probably not going to find my family in there. I am not that lucky. I will look because you got to hope, but I'm not that lucky. And then if I scroll down further, you can see that there's over a million records here. Well, heck, I'm going to search that because I'm more likely to find my family there. So why not? So you want to make sure you're looking at that and having an, keeping an open mind and realistic expectations of what you're going to find. And then we can scroll down a little bit further. And then this shows you the image only historical records. Now this shows you things that have not been digitized. Um, so these you also want to look through, but they're not organized with the things that have been indexed and digitized. So it's, I find this to be a little bit more confusing but I will tell you, you want to look in all the places. So I have it on excellent suggestion from someone from Family Search that these are not all the same. They have such a large institution. They have so many records. They're trying so hard to digitize as fast as they can since they ended the microfilm loaning program. So not everything ends up in all of the different locations. So you have to search them all. I know that sounds like a lot of extra work, but if you were on that mission to find those ancestors, to break through that brick wall, I'm sure you guys are up for that. Okay, so let's look at books. I love family search books. Um, if anybody attended my internet archive class, I think you realize I have a fondness in my heart for digitized books. Um, I think it's incredible that we are moving to a place where people from all over the United States and Canada, other countries, can research from home, can research from whatever location that they're at. Now, one of the things that ties our hands quite a bit is copyright. Uh, people can't digitize materials that are under copyright. You have to have permission from the author or the heirs. 
um, or it has to be out of copyright. So not everything's digitized. You're still going to have to go to libraries. You're still going to have to do the research. But this is still an invaluable tool. So with the Family Search Digital Library, doing a search right here is going to give you information where it actually searches inside the books as well as the book's titles. So let me go ahead and scroll down. So you can see we have the different, um, looks like college, the Frontier Post. Now, one of the things I want you to note is that it says access level public. That means these are books that you can look at and download, which is really incredible. So this is a high school. Now I put in Fort Wayne. So let's see what the full text results are. So when I click on that, it's going to tell me every time Fort Wayne appears within that book. And in case you weren't aware, the genealogy center is in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, so let's say, okay, um, this is what, only place in Fort Wayne where you can buy a camera. Awesome, I wanna see the rest of that. I wanna see what that is. So I'm gonna click on view. Now most of you are not gonna be looking for a place like Fort Wayne. You're gonna be looking for a surname or an entire name. I would recommend if it's not a common surname to use the surname without a first. Because if you put that first name in and sometimes it just doesn't come up quite as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, so this is an advertisement. How cool, it's Kodak hand cameras. How fantastic. So I'm able to look at the page. Um, I can click forward and back. And then I have all of my controls here. So I have the option of looking at thumbnails. Now notice a lot of my options just disappeared. I know these are really faint when you're not hovering over them. So I'm on the thumbnails. And then there's also the facing pages. And then we have the flipping. And then we have the picture. So that's the original one that we were looking at. It was just the image, the picture of the page where we had the results. Now, I am able to print or download. I can search further within the book, but I can also search here. I can use the OCR and take a look at what the text is. Now it's not gonna be perfect because it is computerized. Um, so some of this may be gobbledygook, which is fine, um, but it gives you the gist of what's going on. Now I can also do reverse. So what that means is, I'm gonna take this off because it's highlighting. There we go, whoop, 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 okay. It did not like that I took that off. Um, I'm gonna put the info back up and then do reverse. There we go. All right, so reverse is if the image is really hard to see and you want to change it from positive to negative. Um, sometimes that's really helpful if the text is really faint or somebody penciled something in, really wanna see what that note is. So make sure you utilize that if you need to. I can adjust the contrast. Um, Hello. It's being silly. I'm gonna leave that. Um, I can also rotate. Now, that's not really helpful, but it's kind of interesting. Let's say the book was filmed sideways. Then you could actually take a look at whatever you need. So we're just gonna leave that. Um, you could also optimize Zoom. Hello, friend which means that it's going to make it so it goes back. So if for some reason you decided to play around with it, you could fix it. So zoom in, optimize zoom. Let's see if that'll work now. Anyway, we're having trouble with the controls today. They're just kind of frozen. It's fine. So I'm gonna flip the page and see if that works. Nope, but it's the right side. 
Okay, so if I flip forward, okay, here we go. So now we have an advertisement, which is lovely. But I also like having the info page here because it tells me more information about this book. Um, so one of the things that's kind of interesting is you will note that this book is located at the Allen County Public Library Genealogy Center. So if I wanted to, I could go find this book on the shelf once we're reopened. Another thing is, is that the owning institution, so the institution that digitized this, was Internet Archive. Fascinating, isn't it? They work together. There are scanning stations in the basement of the Allen County Public Library for Family Search and Internet Archive, and they work very closely together. It's a wonderful partnership. So let's go back to books. So I also want to show you that if you scroll down, you can even click an owning institution. So let's go with the Houston Public Library. So now we can look at the different books that they own and see what's in here. So these look like they're all public. Oh, here's a protected. So protected means that you're not going to be able to look at everything. So I click on it. I want to show you what this actually looks like. All right, there you go. Due to copyright restrictions, this book cannot be viewed online. Now, why in the world would the book be here if you can't view it? Well, it's telling you that the book exists. So there's one hurdle. The second is you also know where the book is located, how many pages there are. So now you know you can contact that library and see if they can help you find more information out about this and see if it actually has information on your ancestors. So there is a little bit of benefit here. So you wanna make sure you look and don't become discouraged if the book that you really want is protected. It's probably protected because of copyright and we can't break copyright. We do not want the government coming after us for that. Um, and you don't want that either. So just keep that in mind. We're not trying to restrict materials from you. We really do want you to have all of the information. We want you to be successful. I don't know how to explain that any better than we truly, truly, truly want you, every single one of you, to be successful with your genealogy research. So make sure you ask us questions about whether or not we can help you find information within these books. Now, as I said, since we're closed, um, we, can't, we can't go in and take a look at any of these books and go through them for you right now, but we are more than willing to hold on to your email if you shoot us one and take a look at it once we return. Um, we, have, <laughs> we have a folder um, that's called Coronavirus Shutdown, and that is where all those emails are going, and we are going to go through them one by one once we return, because again, we want you to be successful. So make sure you keep that in mind. Libraries want you to find what you're looking for. Now, another thing that you can look at are images. Now you can take a look through the collection of historical documents. Um, so you can type in a location. So let's go ahead and type in, oh, I don't know, somebody give me a place. I need a place. Italy, thank you. Oh, Warsaw, Indiana, saw that, I'll do both. Start with Warsaw. Kosciuszko County. I've been told that's pronounced Kosciuszko, if I could say it. Okay. So it's saying that it, that's not popping up, which I think is really interesting. So we're going to delete Warsaw and leave Kosciuszko. Ah, there we go. So Warsaw as a town does not have records, but Kosciuszko as the county does. So we have record type, vital, image count, and I can click on it and then take a look within that collection. 
Now, these are really interesting, and it's a different way to search. I don't find this as helpful as going through the catalog, as going through Research Wiki. I feel like this is another step, <laughs> but you never know what you can find. Sometimes by searching another way, it opens your mind up to another possibility of where a record could exist. So make sure to keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, these don't have a lot of information for us to tell us what's in these record sets, which is just a tiny bit frustrating. Let me go back. Somebody did ask for Italy as well. Country, search. I'm actually working on a consultation for somebody that has Italian roots. So this is kind of fun. Um, so this is giving us some, a little bit more information. It's giving us the record type and it's telling us the place within and the dates. Um, so this is kind of interesting to go through. This is a little bit more specific. So I can go ahead and click on one of these and then go through these records. Oh, I do not like how these were digitized. Yeah, half of a page. Yeah, so what they did is they, well, they just kind of overdid it. So the book looks like it's smaller than what their scanner size was. So this is one page, it stops where my cursor is. And then the next page starts where my cursor is, but they decided to overlap on both of them. So it just looks real funky kind of jarring. I like clean, cleaner images, but that's a personal preference. So I wanted to make sure you knew that you can search by images as well. And I like how they have this little counter that just keeps going up. They truly are digitizing all the time. I mean, right now there's a little bit of a holdup, so I'm kind of intrigued that the images are still going up, but they could have gotten uh, images from the different locations and they're still uploading them. Um, while perhaps working from home, because I do know a lot of them are still working. So the other thing that you can look at are the family trees and genealogies. Now I'm going to tell you something. I do not put my family tree in here. Um, this is a personal preference. I find it um, frustrating that any yeah. <laughs> that anybody can edit the family tree. Um, it's a little bit annoying for me because I want to be able to have control over my family tree. I don't like it when my family members are like, oh, well, that person's divorced and their ex shouldn't exist any longer on this family tree. And I'm like, well, it happened. It needs to be in the tree. And that's not you. So I'm not sure why you're upset. So it's weird. Families are weird. So I like to kind of have control. Uh, let's see here. The information one posts on a person can be changed by the next researcher in the upper right hand corner of each person is a watch star. Click on the star and you'll be notified when someone adds or changes the person. Yes, that's exactly right. Now, again, it's a personal preference. I get annoyed. I'd prefer to have my information somewhere else. And that's perfectly fine. My friends at Family Search love it when I tell them that. <laughs> but they also understand. Um, everybody gets to do things the way they want to. And this is a really cool tool. And it's really interesting to be able to have this family tree and the ability to collaborate with your cousins or siblings or family members in other places. So the fact that you can jointly work on one tree together is, could be a benefit. So you can look at it from either perspective. Um, and as Alan said, you can keep an eye on who is changing things and when. Um, so you can put a name in and get some information. Um, Yeah, I don't know why I'm spelling things wrong today. So I am just going to do a search really quick. Probably because people are watching. Oh, wait, Hancock. No, 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 no. 
I like it when I have these things that pop up and actually fill things in for me, but it's a little bit frustrating too. Okay, so um, this is the person I was looking for. So somebody has put the information in here and has all of the, um, the spouse, the parents, and these people are all deceased. So the information's here. So you can look and see what somebody else has already done. Now, this information could be helpful. Now, I recommend that people don't use family trees as um, set research. Take everything with a grain of salt until you find the records. So this person, they have seven sources. Those are the things that I really think are important and you want to look at. So you can see from here, you can see that there are, there's an obituary, um, there's a census record, find a grave, census. So these pieces of information could be helpful. These are what could help you get past that brick wall. So I find this to be incredibly interesting. Um, I'm also incredibly interested in knowing who these people are that are putting this in. But, you know, family's family. Um, I say that not knowing who they are. Watching is a great tool because occasionally um, change made points you to a record you've not seen before. Also great cousin bait. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So um, whoever created this, I actually don't know who this person is. And Harold is my grandfather. I'm a direct descendant of this person. So I'm very curious to who's putting my grandpa in a tree. <laughs> Who, who is following who my grandpa is? Because I know who all of my aunts and uncles are. I know all my cousins. This is a name I've never seen before. So it's probably a distant cousin. And I need to hook up with this person because they may have information that I haven't seen before. So I'm kind of excited about that. The dog is back. <laughs> so another thing that you can do is search in genealogies. Now, these are trees that have been submitted, and these can help fill out information as well. So it's similar. You want to take this information with a grain of salt. So you can put in a name. Um, let's do, I'm just going to do a general John Smith. I know it's going to give me a bajillion answers, but I want to get results. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. 1522, I like this. <laughs> All right, so pulling this information up, it looks like it just has the name um, and no children. So somebody has put this information in without having any other pieces of information other than the birth. So that's kind of interesting. Let's go back. Click on this person, because there's at least others included. Yay, we have a spouse. All right, so now we have information here. And sources, and it's from the parish printout. So that's telling you where that information came from. So you wanna make sure that you're always, always, always looking for the sources when you're playing around in family trees. Um, because quite honestly, you never know what you can find. And this information can help you get through that brick wall. But remember to take everything with a grain of salt. Um, you know, people get very excited and sometimes we'll start linking people together that don't belong. Um, and it's completely understandable. We all have made that mistake at some point looking and saying, oh, well, this must be the right person. It's the right name. And then you look into it further and go, oh, there's another one. That's special. And then you have to redo a little bit of research. Um, so you don't want to do that. You want to take everything with just a little bit of hesitation um, and be a little bit cynical. I'm giving you permission for that. So, but look at the sources. It really could help you find that piece of information that is missing from your family tree. So there's a lot of information in the search and we've gone through all of them in a very different order. 
mainly because I think for most people researching, the research wiki and the catalog are my two favorite places to start, which is why I always start with those. 